Hi guys, this is John, and um, I would like to, first before I start this video, make sure you're watching it in full screen and in high definition 720p, because it's going to be about making good high definition video and what goes into that. So the reason why I'm making this now is because just recently I was able to upgrade to a high def webcam, and this is a Logitech C510, shoots in 720p video, and it's a good quality webcam, it sells for like under $50 online. Um, I was able to get a dented box sale for like 30 off the Logitech website, but it's uh, you know it's, it's not super extravagant or anything like that. It's it's very basic, but it's extremely cheap, and that leads me to the first point of three why it's a good time maybe to start considering maybe upgrading to high def if you haven't already, and that is this cost. I mean, even you know whether it be a camcorder, whether it be a webcam, um, even phones and things like that, they all take 720p or better video now. So you, it's very easy to record in high def and it's very cheap. Second is that when YouTube now, you maximize the video to full screen on YouTube, it defaults to the high definition setting that best matches the resolution of your display, which is usually for a laptop 720p. And so it's going to be a lot easier to watch high, defini high definition video, less clicking. It's just more automatic. And so therefore, more people are going to be consuming your high definition content. So why not make it look as best you can? And third and, and most importantly, maybe, is that high def really looks good on high definition displays in Google TVs or Google Boxes or smart uh, TVs or Blu-ray players that have YouTube apps. There's going to be a lot more consumption of YouTube content on big screen displays. And YouTube looks, or uh, high definition video on YouTube looks amazing on high definition displays and does not look good in the standard definition format. It looks muddy. It's kind of like versus high def TV versus the old standard def TV. So there's really two main options um, to record. There's uh, webcams and there's also camcorders. And I'm going to talk a little bit about each and the kind of tricks and traps of each. All right, I'd like to go over just quickly the advantages and disadvantages of webcam recording. Um, first and foremost, webcams are a little bit cheaper than camcorders, about maybe half as much in cost. Um, they are tethered to your computer, but they write to your computer, so you don't have to find a USB cable and kind of pull it off your camera after you're done vlogging or recording. Um, another advantage is that a lot of times you can record from your webcam as a video source and a more higher quality microphone from your audio source. So if you do singing or need to record um, a very high quality audio signal or just that in general you want your audio to be better, um, it's a far superior solution than the more basic camcorders out there which only offer the internal mic that's built into the camera itself. Um, all right, there's some really important disadvantages also with webcams that need to be pointed out. Usually the software is included with your webcam sucks for recording like here my Logitech software I don't use it because it doesn't record 720p video at 30 frames per second which is vital for YouTube and so I'm forced to use another piece of software which is much more complicated I've kind of figured it out and it's not a big deal you have to set it up usually just once and it will kind of work um, I'll put a tutorial for the one I use it's called Windows Media Encoder um, it's, it's, the tutorial is long. I, I, I go through every single step of how to set it up. And if you have any questions, you know, post them in the comments. I can answer from the tutorial if you get confused. Um, but that is the best way to achieve the highest quality results. Um, but there are also another uh, webcam software. Uh, Microsoft has a new version of Windows Media Encoder called uh, Windows Expression Encoder um, 4. You can, um, these are all free, by the way. And it's, um, it's, it's okay. I, it's a little bit easier to use. The interface is a little bit prettier. Um, not a huge step up from the Windows Media Encoder, which I use. Um, and there's also another program called AM Cap, which is kind of in the middle. It's, it's, a, it's not very complicated to use. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't have as many features as uh, Windows Media Encoder. Um, which brings me to a very important aspect with webcams is the fact that since the webcam itself only captures the video, the CPU, the processor in your computer, has to actually crunch the video and compress it down to a format that is what you actually end up watching. You don't watch raw video, it's always heavily compressed. Um, and that process can be extremely CPU intensive. So if you have an older computer, um, a lot of times it will not be able to record 720p video at 30 frames per second. Um, but you're in luck. I found out while I was going through Windows Media Encoder that there's a special setting that allows you to record on much slower CPU uh, computers that you normally wouldn't support 720p. It's a little trick that will actually allow you to record at a high def quality even though you may have an old or slow computer. Um, I'll put the tutorial to do that also in the description box. 
All right, camcorder is the other option. Here's the camcorder I use. It's a little Flipmino HD third generation version. Um, they are closing these out, so you can find them online for maybe fifty, sixty dollars. Um, they take seven twenty p video, and um, they are pretty basic. Um, they don't have. They have an external mic internal microphone, internal battery. Take about an hour, two hours worth of video, depending on which model you get. And I'm gonna do the rest of this on it, um, mounted on my tripod. So. All right, this is my little Flip Minnow HD camcorder, and like I said, it cost me around $50, $60 um, on the internet um, via it was on sale, and it's a pretty good quality webcam. It has an internal microphone. Um, they're obviously, they're great for, you know, recording other people going outside, vlogging outside, so they're obviously more flexible and things like that. They're just more of a pain because they are, well, easy to record. Um, to get them onto your computer and then to get them into your video editor, sometimes you'll have to transcode it to a different format, uh, Windows Media, uh, Windows Movie Maker, which is what I use to edit my videos, only likes a certain set number of uh, formats, and this isn't one of them, so I have to transcode it using another piece of software called Media Coder, which is free, but again, kind of a pain to use. So these are all things you have to take into consideration depending on which uh, video editing package you use. Um, but they are very easy to use, they take decent quality video, um, they have decent quality audio, and um, if you get the more advanced ones, they have external microphone connectors and things like that. But you're talking about getting into packages that are you know, in the excess of hundreds of dollars, if not more, in a lot of cases. So, um, it's, like I said, it's pretty basic, it kind of requires a tripod. Um, to record with, so it's another fifteen twenty dollars really to use these properly in an indoor environment. So that's about it. All right, to quickly wrap up, I just kind of have one final point that I, maybe people overlook, and that is the fact that when you record yourself and you put yourself on the internet and make videos of yourself, is that you're making a historical archive of yourself, and why not do it at the highest quality you can do or you can afford? Um, because it's going to be a document of yourself, and it's going to be things that maybe you're going to be going back and look at, you know, 10, 15, 20, 50 years later, and these things kind of increase in value, so why not have a very high-resolution image of yourself or a video of yourself, instead of, like, you know, you look back and having old grainy photographs of your relatives, here you have a full-blown, you know, high-definition video of yourself that you can watch or that your children can watch, or your grandchildren can watch, um, and, and these things are are, you know, they're, they don't maybe seem important now, but believe me, they are going to be very important as you get older, and, and you're going to see yourself as a young person, and it's it's just better to have a, a higher quality uh, record of that. So that's kind of my final point, and um, yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, um, I kind of gloss over some maybe technical things fairly quickly. Everything I talk about, there will be links in the description box, every piece of software, every tutorial. So if you, uh, you know, have any questions or you want to go into more detail or more explanation, check those things out and um, good luck.